I'm not going to upgrade my main computer to Mac OS Tahoe 26 yet, but I saw online there's one new feature that is actually ridiculously helpful for me because I have a couple Macs running here at the studio that I remotely access. Like, if I'm on the road and I need to look at a project, it's quicker to remote access my Mac with screen sharing than to browse my NAS remotely. The problem is, every time I've had a power outage, the Mac will reboot, and because I use File Vault, it won't boot all the way back up. You have to physically type in the password right there at the keyboard. So I'm stuck without access to my Mac until I can get back to the studio and be physically present. But that's no longer the case with macOS Tahoe, or macOS 26, or whatever they're calling it. Despite the ugly glass UI, I upgraded my Mac Mini on the workbench, the one I use for testing and remote editing. And I wanted to see if I can get this new feature working, and if there's any quirks or anything like that. So after I upgraded it, I'll first show you how the login flow works normally. Like right now, I just booted it up after the upgrade, and it sits there waiting for me to log in. At this point, I can't screen share, I can't SSH in, or, or anything like that. So if I'm on the road, I can't get into this Mac. I have to be here typing in my password so it can unlock File Vault and finish booting. So I did that here. And I turned on File Vault again just so that I can prove that yes, we have File Vault running now, and I can get into the system even in that state where I couldn't before. Then for remote access, you have to go into sharing and turn on this remote login option. This uses SSH, so macOS uses a stripped down OpenSSH server at boot that's running kind of on a higher level than the normal OS version for better security. So this limited SSH mode lets you log in from another computer on the same network. It's, it's not like a VPN or anything, but if you're like me and you have your own VPN for your studio, your house, or whatever, you can log into that and then get into the Mac this way. So I'm going to shut this computer down and then power it back on with that silly power button. And here's the interesting thing. The first time I tried this, it kept saying connection reset by peer. Then after another reboot, I couldn't even ping the machine. And that was on Wi-Fi. So I'm not 100% sure if this works on Wi-Fi or not. I certainly couldn't get it working. So what I ended up doing was plugging my computer into the wired network, which I have wired jacks all over the place here. But that's something to keep in mind. I don't know if it's supposed to work over Wi-Fi or not, but it didn't for me. Anyway, after I plugged it in, I booted it back up, and here it is again waiting for the login prompt. Right now, the computer's not fully booted. It's just waiting for me to log in so it can decrypt the file system and boot up the rest of the way. So over on my other Mac, I can log in with SSH. And when I do that, it says the system is locked. So you have to use your local username and password, the one for the remote Mac. Once you do that, it unlocks the system. And from that point on, I guess it runs the full SSH setup. So now I can log in with SSH like I could normally, but I can also open up screen sharing. And when I do that, you can see here, when I log in, it logs in on that Mac on the workbench. And once I'm finished with my remote session, it switches back again. And that's how it works. So this is one of the nicest things that Apple's done, you know, the backend changes. So finally, you can have the file vault security while also having true lights out management for remote access. So thank you, Apple. That's actually a nice feature of Tahoe. I hate the UI, but anyway, see you next time.